Well, hello everyone, it's Sharon here from the blog I Restore Stuff, ready for another Essential Stencil DIY Live. I uh, just have my laptop up here to find our live. Thanks for joining me today. And when you're on, let me know where you're tuning in from and um, we'll get started. So we're gonna be doing some coffee themed stenciling today. So, you know, I love my coffee. In fact, I should have made one right for this project, but um, it's going to be fun. So if you are joining in on the replay, comment the word replay underneath for a chance to win essential stencil prizes. And for those of you watching live, stay tuned right to the end because we give away three stencil uh, sets from essential stencils. So that's always fun. Hi, Sharon. Yes, great name. Hi, Bobby, Amanda. And hi, Vicky. Hi, Heidi. Joyce, thank you guys so much for joining in. Just trying to find my live here. Uh, when I refresh the page, it usually shows up, but sometimes it takes it a little bit of a, a while to get going. So let me just get organized. How are you all today? Let me know. Uh, we've got Florida watching. Thank you for sprinkling too. Yes, please uh, feel free to press that share button and share the love um, with our stenciling live to any groups that you might be allowed uh, to share it in or share it to your personal page because then all your friends who are also crafters and DIYers We'll see that there. I just heard my cat sneeze. She's having a little sneeze. I don't know if you can see movement just on the couch behind me here, but she's there. Alrighty, we're gonna be um, stenciling on a Ikea step stool today, which is what I've got here. You can see part of it here if you're watching there. Um, thank you guys. Okay, I can see way more comments here on, on this live. I'll just pop that down here and have a look there every now and then. But here's the stool we're working on. So usually these, these come from Ikea. You can use all sorts of wooden step stools. And I've painted this in some mineral paint. I, if you follow my blog, the blog is called I Restore Stuff. So I'd love you to follow me over there. It's just at irestorestuff.com. And you can find me at I Restore Stuff on any of the social media platforms from Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, YouTube, all of the places. In fact, in on my YouTube channel, I share a bunch of DIY makeovers uh, that I do to old pieces of furniture, making them up, making them new again. And I've painted the base in a white. So this is just a, it's called Artisan Mineral Paint. I sell it here in Australia. And the top is Black Pearl, which is a gorgeous ash gray color. So that's lovely. So I've got this step stool. And I thought it'd be fun to just put a coffee themed stencil on here and maybe on the footstool. And then later on, I've also got this serving tray that I made and I want to put a bit of a coffee, make it into a coffee tray. I was also thinking this would be great and I've seen some in the stencil of the month club. Uh, there's one of the Santa's, you know, little goodies tray that people have been making. That'd be another great reason to stencil this one in that kind of a thing as well. So I'm going to pop some little handles here on the end, but I made this just by joining three boards together and they're just pine boards and attaching and I've screwed those two little bits of wood onto the end there. Then I'm going to pop some little handles onto here like so, but we're going to stencil that in a minute. But I want to show you how you can make a bit of a farmhouse themed look about that tray by doing some sanding to because I've painted that with black paint and to sand it to show it um, uh, a nice finish on that to really make the wood stand out. But let's get started with this first. Now I've got the links to both of the sets of stencils that I'm going to be using today in the description of the live. So they're both coffee themed ones. And this one's been around for a little while, maybe came out last year, I can't remember. But it's the three pack and it's actually called Love is Brewing. So that's the three pack here. And I'll show you what's in that. There's a little bonus in here as well. You can see that I've used some of these not quite cleaned up. Coffee bar, open 24 hours. That's the one, I'll put that aside. We're gonna be using that one on this step stool. Then we've got, but first coffee. Now this is one of the most popular signs that I've made for my sh shop booth. So I have a, a shop booth in a can in a um, antique mall or antique store right here in Brisbane where I live in Australia. This and the coffee bar stencil, one of the most popular signs that I've sold here. Uh, then, there, then we've got this Love is Brewing, which is so cute. And again, it's got those gorgeous flourishes off the end of the word brewing. So 
Again, you know how I like to mix and match things up. You can use these for so many different things, changing up words for other stencils and so on. The bonus that you get here is these three different sizes of coffee beans that you can mix and match or you know, create, use the little bean to make some decorative edges along there. You've got the three beans all in a stack together and a cute little coffee mug with a heart and then a plain coffee mug here. So there's so many different options there. I think I'll be using some of those on here as well. And then the other coffee set we've got uh, that just came out in that last lot, that last batch. Now, any of these guys use my code IRESTOREStUFF and you can get 10% off anything that you buy from Essential Stencil. I'm trying to catch up on our comments. Joyce says, I love the love is brewing. Yes. Hi, Deb from Western Iowa. She says it's hot today. Yeah, and here I am in my long sleeves because it's winter here in Australia. It's funny how we're all on opposite opposite uh, seasons here. So this is a six pack set, but look, there's a little bonus stencil in here. And I think I saw Melissa do a live recently with this set, which is very cute. So we've got hug in a mug. We've got, but first coffee. And we've got home with a little coffee cup on here. Now this home one, I've seen that in a couple of the other stencil sets, or is it one or two, I can't remember, but this home theme here. So you could remove, whoops, this side, remove that coffee mug and put something else right there as well to make some other little stencil that could represent that O for whatever. You know what I did think of? That is also would be a great idea for that tray set. The tray that I'm gonna be doing is the wine set. So some of you, uh, who love a bit of wine might like to use this set for some of these ideas. So I don't know if they've got, they may have a glass of wine that you could, I don't know, use for the O. Um, what else have we got? So this is a six piece set. I think there was a little bonus. So there's coffee beans here. We've got coffee bar, rise and grind and mug life. So did I count six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. So there is a bonus. So the bonus is the hug in a mug. So there are seven in that set. We'll be using those in a minute. Let's get started. I also wanted to show you some shadowing today. So for those of you who've not done any shadowing, stay tuned. You don't want to miss out on that. Um, it's always good to get a refresher. I'm going to try and get this as close as I can and point you down to here. Let's see. Wow, lots of hellos. Thank you guys all so much for, for watching and for sharing our live here. And I'm, I feel like I'm a long way from the camera, but I, I'm working on our table today. So what I'm going to do to create a bit of shadowing. So the color here we've got is um, dark gray. So I'm going to use black as my shadow and then white over the top of it and hope that it kind of stands out a little bit. Or you could do it the other way around. To do shadowing, all you need is two contrasting colors. And I'm just using, you can use any water-based paint. A lot of us like to use acrylic paints. This is a mineral paint. It's just one of the furniture paints that I sell here in Australia. And it's called Artisan is the brand. And this is the color Jet, which is jet black. So I'll just be using one of the essential stencil brushes which <clears throat> come in a set of four. Let me see if I can find all four. There we go. Four brushes and you can use my code IRESTOREStUFF to get 10% off anything in the store, which includes the brushes and the little tags, the wooden tags, um, any of the stencils and that kind of thing. Hi guys, thank you so much for popping in to say hello. Lois says she's just starting to get into stenciling. It get just a little warning. I think we should all warn her. Should we all warn her? It's addictive. It's addictive. Linda says, I'm so glad you're shadowing. That's awesome. I'm glad. All right, let me just see if I can point it down a little bit more. So I'm just using the top of the step stool. If you've just joined me, it's just a, a step stool that I've painted the seat and the step in a dark ashy gray color. Now this, the word coffee bar, I feel like, I'll just pull it back a little bit so you can see. It's just, it goes right to the very edge of the step stool. And I feel like just artistic wise and sign signage wise, it needs to come in a little bit. So I've either got to bring the words closer together and there's not really a lot of gap here, 
or I'm going to put the word coffee here and bar there. So that's what I think I'm going to do. And then I'll put the open 24 hours down here on the foot on the step stool. So now I've got to try and make my coffee centered to the top here. So just pop it back down so we can make that centered. And I'll use my painter's tape just to tape that down on the stool. Please feel free to ask any questions as we're going um, and I can answer those either as we go or yes, Kay says, yes, very addictive. So many stencils and ordered two more plus brushes today. That's awesome. Yeah, the brushes, um, people are saying they're loving the brushes and that they actually buy a few sets so that you can kind of stencil a lot, of, a lot at once and you don't have to, I should use my tape measure. I never do this, do I? For those of you who knew me, know me, I don't often measure to get my, I just eyeball it. Oh, look at that. Now this is in just centimeters, so. Oh, yep, see, I would have been way off center. That was six centimeters, this one's eight. I need to move over to seven, let's see. Seven centimeters from the edge for the C. So I'm just centering the word coffee. And let's see, seven centimeters there, perfect. Perfect guys. Okay, and I'm just gonna line it up here and guess that we've got the rest right. Oh, I'm glad I did measure that. It pays to measure sometimes. Yeah, thank you, Connie. Yeah, she loves the gray and white. Yeah, stenciling is very relaxing. <clears throat> you know, what I didn't get is a piece of cardboard to um, offload my stencils on or paper. You can use paper towel, but what I might do is just use, I've got a towel down here. Let me see if that will work. All right, so what we need to do is just dip a little bit of paint onto the edge of our brush and you can see that sort of, whoop, there we go, it's sort of dripping there. We don't want it to drip. So what I do is I very carefully, without flicking the paint everywhere, is I wipe the um, edge of the brush no, I wipe the edge of the container with the brush. There we go. And uh, then I've got, you know, still too much on my brush. So what I'm going to do is offload. You probably can't see that down here. I'm just going to offload it onto this old towel that I have lying down here. Usually I have cardboard under here, but I did a towel today. So you're not going to see this black a lot under here, but it's just going to create a really nice subtle shadow. And remember, I'm just doing the word coffee. So I could put some tape over the word bar just to remind me. Actually, I'm going to start this end while I'm thinking about it so that I don't, so that I don't accidentally put the word bar, the B. Hmm. See, from here, I'm seeing, I really can't see a lot of what is coming out underneath there. I'm not seeing the black because it's so close to the color, the gray. So we'll see how it works. If it doesn't, never mind. Oh, I think I had a little bit too much on my brush there. Hopefully we don't see any bleeding under. See, the more you rub off the brush or offload the brush, the more, the less chance you get of that paint bleeding under the stencil and creating fuzzy edges. We don't want fuzzy edges, do we? Maggie said, this is one you do not have. It's the coffee stencil. Yeah, so for those of you who love to make signs and sell them or even give them as gifts to family and friends, create a bit of home decor. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, the coffee sign is a fun one. It's a, it's a good seller as far as signs go in my shop anyway. All right, so let me just show you. Can you see the word coffee? It did stand out. I was thinking it wasn't going to stand out very well. So hopefully that'll be really nice as a shadow underneath my white that I'm going to do on top it's because I want to do white to contrast to make it stand out sort of like the legs are. All right, so now we're gonna put the word bar <clears throat> and I'll have to remeasure again. And I'm gonna put bar in the center down here. And I guess you could use this for a step stool for your kitchen. So I'm not gonna really need my measuring tape for this one because I can see that the R and the B line up just really at the end of this hole that's in the middle of the step stool and just lining that up now with this way we want to get it centered so we've got the same distance here and here so here we are eyeballing that 
put some tape down so it doesn't go anywhere. And I may even have enough on my brush to be doing this here. Mm, not so sure, I might have to get some more on. So dipping the brush in. So Sonia says, I like starting in the middle and working the way outward for stenciling, yeah. Uh, so do you mean the middle word, the middle letter maybe? Starting on the middle letter. When it's a really large letter, um, you've got large spaces within the stencil. I do start in the middle of that space and it sort of uses up a lot more of the paint as you go and then work towards the outside edges of a stencil. But when you're using doing letters, it's a little bit harder to, to do that because the brush covers the entire letter space. All right, let's have a look. Coffee bar. Okay, so that's a nice subtle finish there, which would still look nice and effective, but that is in fact going to be my shadow. And what I should have done is probably not measured the exact, you know, I should have measured it as a shadow and I'm going to put the white in the right spacing, but I don't think it will make much of a difference. So we'll do this top part first and then I'll work on the step, which I might have to do a little bit differently since we're, um, I can't reach the step from down there. See the step, I'm going to put in some more words on there. Um, in fact, while that's drying and uh, what I want to do is, I'll just move the step out of the way because I want to show you, we've got to clean this off because what I don't want to happen is, let me see if I can point that down a bit more. What I don't want, this is where I wiped off my brush. What I don't want to happen is for my, uh, when I do my white, I don't really want it to turn gray. So it's going to be important when I'm doing my white, if I'm used black as a shadow, we want to clean that off as much as we can. Being very gentle with those, these little bits here because the B, very thin bridges on that B. Should have got some spray here to help me, but this is just a damp, a wet cloth. It's had a little bit of paint on it, but I've rinsed it out. You want to just get the majority of that paint off. And um, let me just see if there's any other questions. Joyce says, we're having a severe thunderstorm watch. Oh. Yes, the stencils do clean up fairly easily. Um, and I've seen Melissa uses a product called Awesome and I've just bought some recently. Should have had that here to show you. I do have it in my Amazon store um, if you know, need to know where to get that. But when you've just stenciled, only just stenciled then, like I did, it's fairly easy to wipe back. Now, you can see that I did have some white paint on that from making signs. And always make sure, see we've got a big mess here, we've got half the stencil on the, on the towel here now, but just remember to wipe the back also, so that that doesn't, the paint doesn't get onto your stool. All right. I will try and do this like that. Let's see if I can do that. What I want to do is put this open 24 hours right down here at the front. Now it's going to be a little bit awkward. Some people do cut their stencils, but I find it so much easier when they're all together. If you've got a set that the set stays together, um, as if I can help it, I don't cut the stencils. Uh, I just find that it keeps it all together and it actually um, <coughs> is more stable to put on places, but it's in these awkward sort of places like this that you get a little bit. So I'm going to bring it down to the front of the, ste as the um, step because, where is it? I'm going to see if we can put some of these, you know, this little bonus stencil, the coffee cup, the mug or the little beans in here at the top. And we may or may not have room to have the little, what do you call that? The steam coming out of the coffee mug. So let's just have a look. We'll put that there. And we'll see. Oh no, we'll have plenty of room. No problem at all there. Okay, so see how we can kind of line these up. We've got the edges. I'll just grab that tape and this is perfectly around, fits perfectly onto the edge of the stool. So I'm able to tape that. 
whereas sometimes you don't have the edge there. So I'm going to not do a shadow on this one. I'm just going to do my shadow on the top. So we are going to go, I'll just pop this brush over here. I'm going to go with the white paint now. And this is the white paint that I'll be using for the top where I make that a shadow. It'll all make sense in the end. Thank you guys so much for watching and for sharing and for joining in the conversation because don't go anywhere. At the end, we always pick a few winners to win uh, some essential stencil prizes. <clears throat> okay, so dipping my brush in again to the white paint, but we can see that we've got a little bit too much on our brush there. And I was just saying before, if you've just joined me, that I forgot to bring some offloading cardboard. So I'm just using this towel that I've got down here to just offload the brush a bit. Um, and it looks like we don't have a lot at all, but wait till we see how much we actually have because we'll find that we do have a bit enough, plenty on our brush to be doing a stencil. Now a little bit more, wiping it off on the edge. And the more you can wipe off, it's better to have less on your brush and do a second coat than have too much and have it bleed under and cause for the edges. I feel like I had a little bit too much on my brush. I always panic when that happens. Like, oh no, I don't like fuzzy edges. Okay, let's see how we go there. So this is our white on this gray. Whoops. Perfect. So there we go. Open 24 hours. And then we can add our <coughs> coffee. We can decide what we want up here. You wouldn't have to have something, but we can have a few beans something in the center. You could do something on both sides, but I feel like just one little something in the center might be, might be good. What about a little coffee with the heart? I'm wondering if that 24 is the center. It's got me thinking I need to get my measuring tape out again, hey? Let's see. Let's see how well I eyeballed it. This is the test. All right, so that's almost 18 to there. Oops, just shifted it. I did great. Maybe just a slight shift. A little bit more. A little bit more. <laughs> and then the edge of here. Oh, actually, we've, we've, it probably doesn't matter too much because we've got the edge of the cup. All right, but that's, that's where it's going to be. Now, I could do a shadow here and a, another and then go over it with the white which then would sort of tie that in there. So let's have a look at that. I do, I do still have a tiny bit of black left on my brush. So let's do that and we'll create a bit of a shadow on this mug with the heart in the center. Ooh, do I have paint on my brush? I don't even know. It's not enough, I feel. Should have taped it down. I can feel that's gonna shift. One might be enough to just hold that there while I get a little bit more paint on my brush. Whoop! It moved. We don't want it to move. We don't want to shadow the shadow. <laughs> okay, I think we're okay. It won't, we won't tell too much when it's all said and done because we're putting the white over the top. So stay tuned for that. So you can see we've got that little bit of a coffee cup there. That's going to be our shadow for the top. Now, what do I need? My cloth, just wipe off that coffee mug so that we don't get gray when I want to put white over the top of the mug. Okay, lids. Right now, are we ready to do this shadowing up here? That should be plenty dry enough. 
Maggie says she got some stencil a month club stencils today. Mine arrived yesterday too. <laughs> Um, you will, Maggie, for that question, just uh, email support at essentialstencil.com and they will help you out with your inquiry. There we go. So you can see the coffee bar there. That's going to be our shadow. And we've cleaned off the stencil. So now I have to, here's how we do the shadowing. And um, let me see, where's the word gone? Here it is. So we had centered that and here is, if I lay that on the top of the stencil exactly, it's very hard to see the black on gray under through the stencil. So I've lined it up exactly. Now I'm just going to go slightly to one side. So let's say we want the shadow to come here. I'm going to move it slightly, uh, slightly this way. <laughs> you can just see my thumb there. Slightly to the, that's your left my right and move it slightly up ever so slightly okay and then I put my tape down firmly in place so that and just remember which way which direction I did the shadow so that when we do the bar down there it'll be the same all right back again to my paint dipping my brush in wiping it off on the edge of my container and just doing a little offload and we may or may not need um, a second coat on our white, just depending on how, because whenever, and I tell this to people who I teach how to paint furniture as well, if you're doing white paint over a dark color, say a dark piece of furniture that's just got a dark wood stain on it, you're going to use a lot more coats of white over a dark color than you would say if you were doing painting it in a dark color. It just kind of makes sense. So that's the same with when we're stenciling white on anything dark. Just know that you probably may need a couple of coats. And I do have my hairdryer here if we need to dry that quickly. And I also have my fun tray that I thought would be good to work on. Okay, note to myself, don't stencil the bee. over it so I don't accidentally do that. Um, Kanitha, is that how you say your name? Kanitha? Uh, does it matter which direction you do the shadowing? She's asking and that's a good question. It doesn't matter. I don't find it matters. I tend to do the shadowing so that the shadowing is underneath because if you think about the sun, sun is high so coming down shedding light on something the shadow is created on the ground. So I at least do my shadow making the shadow come underneath. Um, so that's why I move it up slightly. But whether you go left or right is completely up to you. You can do it whichever direction you like. So that's my general thoughts about it. But honestly, you could just make your shadow go anyway, anywhere you like. Maybe there's a spotlight coming from underneath and it's shadowing it up the top. So really it doesn't matter too much. All right, just trying to get a little bit more coverage on there. And I think it'll be good for now, but if I decide later on after my live that I think I need an extra uh, bit of white on there, then I'll do that. Okay, here's the big reveal and we can see how lovely and 3D looking that word coffee is. If I can hold that up a little bit closer, you can see the shadow just under and slightly to one side of the word coffee there. So that's how we do shadowing. We'll do it again for the word bar who's going to try this now if you've never tried shadowing before let me know in the comments let me know never tried shadowing before and um, then let me know are you going to try that this week on a stencil you can do it with words you can do it with pictures you can do it with anything all right once again I've got the stencil lined up exactly where I put the black and now I'm looking at my coffee up here my word up here and I'm going slightly up and slightly to one side your left my right and we will make the shadow black and the, the main stencil white all right dipping my white paint in again 
removing the paint off the brush. Diane says she's going to definitely try shadowing. You make it look so easy. It is, but you know what, guys? Always, you can always practice on a, um, a cardboard, a paper towel. Brenda's never tried. She's going to start now. Going to take the plunge this weekend. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Dana says she's never tried it before either. Um, Debbie says shadowing has been my new finishing touches. That's amazing. Yeah, it does. It just adds a really nice finishing touch, doesn't it, to you, to your stenciling. I feel like I've got more white on this than I do the word coffee, but we'll see. Feels like it covered a little bit better. Got to be really careful of the of the letter B. Those bridges are really fine. Okay, how did that go? Ta-da! The word bar, same thing. We've got the little dark shadow on there. It just kind of makes it pop. Looks makes it look a little bit 3D. So just moving that back a little bit so you can see. It's a very subtle shadow. You can shadow with other colours too, you know, like um, bright colours. Just make sure there's two contrasting colours if you want it to really stand out. Here's the base here. So, oh, it wasn't this that I did the shadow on. It was the little coffee cup with the heart. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. So remember we stenciled this little coffee cup here with the heart on it. And I'm going to actually do the same thing as I did up the top. So we lift it slightly higher and we bring the stencil slightly this way. And I'll put a piece of tape so we don't move. Offloading the brush and away we go. This one I feel like it's going to be a little bit more subtle. I've got, even got room for the steam. Stool would look cute in the kitchen, maybe where you are, sometimes where you stack your coffee mugs is a little bit like on a high shelf or something, so there's a good idea to have a step stool. You could do one like this. <coughs> okay, I feel like that was a little bit too much paint on there. The edges aren't too fuzzy, but there we go. Hopefully you can see a little bit of shadowing there when I bring it up close. A little bit of shadowing and so you see the difference. There's no shadowing on that open 24 hours sign, but there is shadowing on the coffee mug. So that's a little bit of a subtle difference there. So there's our coffee bar stool. Now I just wanted to show you our other project here today is <clears throat> this tray that I made. If you missed the very first part of the live, thank you so much for all the hearts. You guys are wonderful. So I made this tray, just stuck together three, a few pieces of wood with, I screwed these little side bits on them. You can kind of see them raised a little bit there. So I'll add some handles onto here, but I just wanted to do something simple. Put one of these from the six pack coffee mug set. Now, any of these, you can use my code, I restore stuff, get 10% off all of your stencils. Before we do the stenciling though, I just wanted to show you how I've painted this black but I want to sand the edges and you'll see how it'll just give it a little bit more of a farmhousey distressed look. So I'll sand the edges before I put the stencil on. So see, we've got this nice plain edge here. I'm going to make the wood grain then really pop out. You might see the difference if I, I show you one side and then not do the other side, just sort of see. I'm just using, um, I don't even know what grit this is. This is a 120 grit sandpaper. Who else has made some serving trays like this? Okay, so I want to get also this edge here. 
a bit dusty from the sandpaper right now. You can also see my screws in here, but that's okay because it's we want this rustic kind of look. Actually, I will do the other side. You'll be able to see. When I hold it up close, you'll just see that pop of wood shining through. Um, let's see if I can use my cloth, wipe that off a bit. Okay, so see how that, you can see the wood then shining through the black. And someone's asked, uh, is that Joyce? Hi Joyce, you'll seal the little stool. Yeah, you can seal the stool, the top of the stool so that your stencils, you know, stays there longer. I would seal it with a flat matte sealer, which I brought here. Um, I'm just using the Artisan brand. This is an Australian brand, but you can use any kind of acrylic wipe on poly or sealer to do that. So I've done that. I've sanded back there. Now you could have the option then of see where the joins are in here. You could sand a little bit on those joins and have even more wood showing through there. It doesn't even have to go all the way across, but it just sort of highlights, make it look, makes it look a little bit more, I don't know, country, farmhouse, makes those stand out. Do a little bit more on the edge there. Make it really stand out in the center. Now, as I wipe that back, see how it makes you, the lines stand out. You can see those lines a little better. So I've painted just plain black and then I've sanded back so you can see the wood, wood grain pop through. And then I'll put my stencil on and I'm just going to make this one. Let's see, a really simple one out of this six pack. I showed these at the beginning, all the different stencils that you get in this, plus a seventh bonus stencil in the, in the mini copy set. And I'm just going to put that, be fir but first coffee. Then it can be like a little breakfast tray or something like that. I always doubt myself, have I got it around the right way? <laughs> okay, so using my tape that I just used before, we'll just do that. And the white brush, my white paint. offloading on my towel because I forgot to bring a piece of paper or cardboard so yeah Maggie says I like that set too it is very cute there's six in the set so all these all these ones here I like rise and grind I do like I like the mug life one as well all right so going here now to do my but first coffee I've just kind of centered that Not doing any shadowing on this one, just making it a nice, plain, simple French country, I guess you'd call it, or you could call it farmhouse style. We'll add some handles. It'll look great. Hello, Missy. Missy the cat's over there on the stool saying hello. Don't know if you could hear her bell tinkering before. Okay, super easy farmhouse coffee tray. And don't forget too, if you join the Stencil of the Month Club, you get 50% off if you use my code IRESTOREStUFF. And this month's Stencil of the Month Club is a lot of fun. In fact, I think Grace is demonstrating that this week, so don't miss Grace's live where you'll see her demo the Stencil of the Month Club set. I just got mine yesterday. Let me just show you. It's lots of fun. All football and fall themed. Is that cool or what? I bet some of you have already got the stencil set already, but lots of fun stencils in that set. So if you do join Stencil of the Month Club and use my code IRESTOREStUFF, you will get your first month free. No, not free. 50% off your first month. So isn't that cute? It's just, but first coffee. Now, I feel like when that dries, I'll just sand that a little bit and buff that and sand it. And then I have these cute handles to go right here. You can't see them though, so I'm not sure if I should 
Hmm, I'm not sure if I should do something different with the handles because they don't really stand out. Not that they should, but I'll show you my handles. They're really rusty iron handles, so they blend very well to that whole theme of rustic farmhousey look. So what I'll do now is I'll see the, the lines that you can see, that's just the wood grain showing through. And so all I have to do is seal that now with some flat matte sealer, which I have. So I'll do that afterwards. And let me just check that that's dry. I feel like that could be a bit rough. Not sure if I've got a, a thinner sandpaper. I don't think I do. But something like a 400 grit might work better. Let's just go for it. We'll see. Sometimes, oops, sometimes even just a a roughed up piece of paper will do the trick, but I'll see if I can be super, super gentle because I don't want to rub off my whole stencil. Really, really gentle. And I would use something like a 400 grit rather than what I'm doing right now. But I want to just distress the words and make it look a little bit like it's all worn and old. So this is a really simple, easy project. You could either find a board pre-made already like this, but all I did was, um, okay, I'll bring that up close. All I did was join three boards together using a couple of boards at each end like this to sit on top, screwed them down, and I painted it black, sanded back the edges to distress the edges like you saw, and I even distressed along these lines of the, the wood joins and now you can see how I've just distressed the word, the stencil right there. So you can kind of see that it looks a little bit aged and old. So there you go. We're going to pick some prize winners now. Essential Stencils getting ready to pick those winners. Let me just show you. We've done two fun projects today. So if you missed any of those techniques, we did shadowing. I showed you how you could make an IKEA step stool into a coffee bar stool to reach those high shelf coffee mugs. So there's our little handle set. I'll go and screw those handles back on now and I'll wipe off this. Here's the step stool. Let me just show you that. I'll pop this up a little bit so I can see you. <laughs> you can see me. And here's the stool we made. So if you missed the beginning of this, I showed you how to use whoop, a shadowing technique. You got that? You can see the 3D shadowing in there. And um, as a Essential Stencil is going to be picking winners any minute now. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and for joining in the conversation. Um, it's so much fun when you're all joining in. <laughs> and you also get the added benefit of being a possible prize winner. If you're watching the replay, you can comment the word replay. And there's in the next 24 hours, there's another chance of winning an Essential Stencil set. So here's our winners. I've got to put my glasses back on to see who the winners are. Congratulations, winners. And we've got Laurie and Linda and Joanne. Laurie, Linda and Joanne. You can email support at essentialstencil.com and let them know your details and where to send your prizes to. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to use my code, irestorestuff, uh, when you want to order stencils. If you want to order any of these sets, Stencil of the Month Club, you get 50% off your first month um, using that same code, irestorestuff. And I will see you over on somewhere else, Facebook or on my Instagram page or on my Pinterest or YouTube. See you there and see you next week. Bye.